<laughs> All right, so I'm going to get started. Um, I saw my brother's OSCON uh, flyers and all that, and it's, you know, Pearl, we suck at marketing, and I'm going to fix that. <laughs> so, marketing Pearl, we will suck at marketing no more. Uh, who the hell am I? I'm Chris's little brother, and I was uh, that kid, you know, that pair of parents right there. I'm their kid. I was raised around computers. I've had them in the house since before I can remember. Uh, my mom's a programmer. My dad, he's getting good. We got him a Mac that way has only one button. Uh, my brother's a programmer, and I'm halfway in the middle. I can make jokes about it, but I don't get what the hell I'm talking about. Um, I'm not a programmer. Let me, let, me, let me specify that. I mean, like, I had trouble with a Java class. I needed a lot of help. No, I mean, a lot of help. I mean, two people, it, it turned into an international incident, and I still barely made a C. So, um, why do you need to listen to me then? No. <laughs> Uh, I, I have researched about a lot of different languages. I did, you know, because over this past year, I've talked, you know, looked at what is Lisp, what is Erlang, what is Lisa, who uses Lisa, why does Lisa exist, what is Perl, and uh, I truly believe that Perl is the beat-all end-all. I do believe that it is the, a great last language. It is adaptable in a lot of things like that, and I have also done a lot of research in alternative marketing strategies, not just let's throw commercials at the wall, but free things, things that don't cost a lot, but do market your business and market your language a lot better than throwing stuff into, you know, getting Pearl a Super Bowl ad. It's not going to happen. Um, and I'm also a graphic designer. <coughs> Shameless plug for my company, Missing Monkey Graphics, if anybody needs anything designed. I'm uh, currently taking orders. Uh, plus, those other talks are boring. They have code and stuff, and mine has no code. I can promise you that. No code. Uh, marketing Pearl, it's uh, like Enlightening Pearl, but a little more practical. Um, we're not going to get the, the numbers that some people do, don't sue. Uh, some people have heard, though, when I, when I was talking about Marketing Pearl, they're like, well, why should we market Pearl? We're doing just fine. We're a top ten programming language and all that. We're fine just the way you are. You're not. This is a dying language. It's, you know... Not many people know about it, not many people have heard it, especially on the business end. I mean, a lot of the marketing directors don't know that Pearl exists or what it is, and I think that needs to change. Uh, who hasn't heard of Pearl? A lot of people, including those business directors who have a lot of money, those venture capitalists who have a lot of money. We need to get more news out there. We need to get the name out there and push it a little bit further. And uh, we're not a dead language. You may be not, but hospice is calling. I mean, you guys are on the way out, I think. It's not dead yet, but it's getting there. So with marketing, I'm hoping to increase two things. We're going to get more jobs and more programmers. Why, again? Because jobs equal business and programmers equal, well, the more business, the more money there is inside Pearl. That's good. That means more money for you guys, more money for conferences that people can sponsor and things like that. More programmers equals a bigger community, more people coming to these conferences, more seats here so that people can listen to me blabber on. Uh, and job security. If you know a language that's now taking off, if you know Ruby, your job's pretty secure until the next little kid knows it. And if you know Pearl and Pearl's growing up there, you've got more of a market. You've got other places that will hire you, so your corporation will want to keep you because you're one of the big wigs inside Pearl for coming to conferences like this. And there's also more pre-written code now that there's more programmers trying to get in, which even makes everybody's thing, CPAN will be even bigger. Huh? Everybody loves that. No? I'm excited. Exactly. So what needs to change, though, to make this gratefully dead language even more, you know, uh, reinvent or reinvent it, kind of? Yeah, not dead. We need to fix the bad habits from the past that are still going on, some of which, and then we also need to make change for a healthier future. And let's work on the bad habits first. The, uh, the, the past mistakes that I've noticed in the Pearl community and how to correct them. Uh, a lot of people say that Pearl is nothing but line noise. Yeah? I think that a large part of that is a lack of knowledge of regex. It could be. Uh, what I've heard, though, is a lot of people call it just people who've never programmed in Pearl call it a bunch of line noise. They look at it. And some people say it's hard to maintain, and those are people who have programmed in it, and some people say it's for hippies. <coughs> well, I say it's for hippies. 
the people that say that it's nothing but per- line noise is people program for an intellectual challenge. I think that's one of the things that people don't quite grasp. And if you look at some of the languages, they're a little bit simpler to figure out and stuff like that. So Perl takes a little bit more thinking, a little more imagination. And that's where I think we need to differentiate ourselves. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. The other thing that will help is notating. Notating your code will help it realize that, no, that's not line noise. That's what I'm talking about right here. It's simple things to do. And if you practice that, you practice the, you know, what they teach you in Enlightened Perl, it will help make your code a little bit more usable, a little bit more understandable, and help people realize it's not just line noise. So it's hard to maintain. I can't do it. It's a read-only language, or it's a write-only language. This stems also from that same line noise. So if you notate, <coughs> I'm harping on this, and you practice enlightened Perl techniques, it will help your code. It will help people realize, no, this isn't just random garbage that I've thrown up there. This isn't mind screw. I mean, it's, it's an actual language that does have legitimacy to it. And if you're not catching the pattern, notate and practice enlightened Perl are two things that I will preach. Knowing nothing about programming, I'll still preach it, because it just makes sense. If you can tell me what this does, then I understand it. And as for pearls for hippies, just take a shower, you bunch of hippies. <laughs> Another shameless plug for my company. Um, so the other thing we need to do is stop Perl abuse. <laughs> People are always talking about Perl is a dead language. People are always harping on Perl. I've heard like there were buttons circulating at OzCon saying you know, Perl is a dead language and all that. That needs to stop. And it needs to stop with you guys. What we need to get people saying is that Perl programmers are disciplined. They are amazing. They can seem selflessly, uh, Perl programmers solve seemingly impossible problems accurately, quickly, and at a responsible cost, or a reasonable cost. And I think that everybody in here can do that, will do that, and does do that, but we need to promote it. We need to show businesses that you guys can do that. Perl programmers have at their disposal a repository of established tools to get paid for, so they're not reinventing the wheel. You guys do have CPAN out there. You do have a great collective of Perl programmers that are willing to give you code for free. Who else does that? What other industry has that? Well, I've made this before, let me give it to you. You don't see Ford saying that about steering wheels. It's not done. So, I mean, you guys have even more of it. You have this great community that's willing to work to not just reinvent the wheel, but in- invent better wheels and fix the problem that's at hand, not the one that has already been solved by somebody else. Um, they can write maintainable code. It is possible. We've discussed that before. And uh, you're not tied down to a vendor. With Java, you're tied to Sun. I mean, with C Sharp, you're tied to Microsoft. With Perl, you're a hippie. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, Perl's great community of experts represent a better value to an expensive support contract with a major corporation. If something breaks in Perl, you just go to a monger meeting and they'll help you figure it out, or you go on to the Perl Foundation, they'll help you figure it out, or you don't have to call tech support and figure out why your C-sharp isn't compiling, which, yeah, that's just awkward. We have a lifeline. Exactly. And I want other people, the other things we need to start doing is like, job, it's a corporate environment, it's a corporate job, you know, you're replaceable, you are a cog in the machine. That's okay for some programs, but not for all. I mean, Ruby, it's bleeding edge, it's newest, it's a flash pan. I want this to be what people are saying about the competition. And Python, it's inflexible. It's people who like puzzles with only one answer. That's no fun. I mean, and PHP, you're a really bad designer and don't know how to program. (coughs) But, so where does Perl fit? Perl, I believe, fits anywhere and doing anything that you want it to. But it needs to differentiate itself from the competition. This is where kind of a controversial bit that I'm talking about is, since there are so many different ways to skin the cat in Perl, it's more adaptable, which means that the programmers sitting down there have to have a little bit more of an imagination than I think they do in Python. If there's only one answer for Python, and there's so many for Perl, getting the right answer for the right problem, I think is where you guys come in and need to market yourself as more of a craftsmanship style of programmer. I'm not, yeah, there may be more than one answer to this, but I will find you the best one, the most elegant one that fits your solution. And that's where I think we need to be. Artists behind the keyboards. I mean, you're, you're taking yourself up above. Yes, Java can get it done, but do you really want it to be another cog in the machine? Or do you want elegant code that's written well the first time and at a better rate? 
But that also means that your code has to be better and has to be more of a craftsmanship. Your skill and the elegance that your code comes out is what you're marketing, mostly, with Perl. I mean, you'll fix the problem one way or the other, but doing it in the most elegant way possible, that's what Perl, I think, needs to harp on. It's adaptable more than any other language I've ever seen. And that's the point that I'm going at, is with this putty, basically, that duct tape behind everything, use it to your advantage and sell that. That's, I think, the major key point to selling for Perl. Um, that's why you need to be artisans behind the keyboards, and it is a better programming language. Let people know that, yeah, there's many different ways to skin the cat, but you have a unique problem. Our way is unique to your solution. There you go. Um, the other part, then, after correcting those past mistakes, we need to look forward and talk about what's coming next. Perl's going to be around longer, hopefully, than everybody in this room. So what do we need to do that? We need to get more businesses, and we need to get more programmers, like we talked about before. So, starting with the businesses, or those people that hold all the cash. Businesses are in the... All they do is they make money. So what do we need? The more problems that can be solved correctly within a given period, uh, the more money that a business can make. That's the key to a business. And that's the key where I think Pearl can come in. Programmers need to be able to uh, adapt and uh, use the adaptability of the code to solve those problems in an elegant time scale, underpriced, under budget, and under time. I think Pearl can and does allow for that a lot better than others because you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You do have a support group, all those pluses to it makes it a little bit better and a little bit easier to get this stuff done. Uh, programmers, though, the most valued resource, also need to be maintained. You need to keep people retained inside the language. People that are Perl programmers, you don't want them going, well, it was a good language back Perl 3, but you know, Perl 6 isn't you know, what I want it to be. Who knows what Perl 6 is going to be anyway. But you don't want them going off into Python or into Lisp or Erlang. Um, you want them to be able to retain, so you need to get people into it. And if you get people more into the community, they're less likely to stray. Bringing people out to conferences like this, having people shove them into the meeting, shove them into a Perlmonger meeting, get them involved in a community so it feels more like they're a traitor if they leave the place. I mean, it's backhanded, but it's free. And you have more people then that are programming you. Yeah. The other thing we need to work on, though, is recruitment. Getting the new people in. Getting the butts in the seats, getting cigarette ad kind of style. We need you to start smoking, so use Pearl. Use it once, the first one's free, kind of thing. So with retention, though, like I was saying, keep the community alive. Go to your monger meetings, support your monger meetings, do things like that. Because you need to add, you need to build a community, you need to grow the community, and you need to act responsibly in it. You can't be a whiny little brat at the meetings and expect people to want to come back. That, more than itself, will actually turn people off of it. It's not just how well your code is, but how well you talk about your code. You need to be a little bit of an ego check on it, and more people are more willing to listen to you if you're nice. So being a jackass hotshot programmer won't get you very many clients, and it won't get you very many people in your programming language either. That's what I mean by act respectfully. Uh, recruitment, though, getting the new people on, that goes into current programmers that are programming other languages and future programmers, those that aren't programming yet. Don't anybody look at me like that. Um, the current programmers, though, if you go go to a Ruby on Rails meeting and say, hey, if anybody wants to learn a language that'll pay in four years, come to my Perlmonger meeting. Uh, if anybody wants to go to, I know Orlando's got a Silverlight meeting. Who knew? I, I've talked to them saying, you know, there's Orlando.pm. I'm still getting in talks with the, the head of the Orlando.pm to actually have a meeting. But, you know, he's busy doing other things. I don't know what. I don't know what. Um, but invite them to the community. Make the community inviting. The other thing, find good people to talk about stuff who share a common love. Like when I come here, I don't know much about Pearl, but you guys are still inviting and welcoming, and I like coming here just to hang out and talk. Probably not about code, but I still <laughs> like to sit here and talk. And the other thing is, when people are knocking on Pearl, stop it right there. Correct them. I, I've I've heard this more and more times. Is you know. I'm like, well, Perl's the best language out there. Well, you're a Perl programmer. Perl's the best language out there. As far as you're concerned to other people, yes, that can solve the problem, but here's the Perl solution to it, and here's why the Perl solution could be better. 
Oh, it just stopped the abuse for, from happening. It's like you guys are like the little brother that doesn't stick up for themselves. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> um, and remember that th those, those bad habits do exist and that you're correcting them. <laughs> and so those are part of the format. And promoter conferences, that's another part, is OSCON. Do a better display. I mean, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but yeah, uh, I, I need a, a, a bigger push out there. I want like an inflatable onion. I mean, it'd be kind of cool to have that. I mean, build competitions so that Pearl can do it. I mean, promote yourself out. Say, you know, be the cock of the block at that point, but do it respectfully. I mean, yeah, Ruby's great if you like that, but I think that my Pearl team could build a machine that could beat your Ruby team and have competitions like that that prove that Pearl is better and make sure that Pearl is better. I mean, I don't know of another language that has a golf idea. I mean, Pearl golf to me is hilariously funny. I don't see that happening in Java. I don't see that happening in Python. But this part really annoys me. The Pearl Foundation was, in 2010, the Pearl Foundation provided $1,000 of free printed marketing materials distributed by volunteers at the Pearl advocacy booths and non-Pearl events through the year. $1,000? Really? Really? And I, I never saw these things, and I don't know anybody who did see them. But people like swag. I can design t-shirts. Hey! Um, I, I'm designing a bunch of t-shirts right now. Um, people like drink koozies. <coughs> I can do drink koozies. Uh, people like pens. I can do pens. Uh, people like buttons. I've done buttons. Uh, people like stickers. These are all things that help market Pearl a little bit better. People that they can hold in their hands. And I'm not talking just with the Pearl programmers, but more for the business idea. I mean, if I, I don't have anything tangible in my hand, then I'm not going to be able to report on it very well in my marketing meeting. If I have a stress ball in my hand, which I can also do, um, <laughs> then I can bring that to people and say, well, this, this is what I got, and this reminds me that they can fix our problem a lot cheaper and a lot easier. Or even like a sticker, so that it, it goes on the college campus-wise, they stick things everywhere. I think it's one of the best things to do on a college campus, because those little put stickers everywhere on everything, and it's free advertisement that you don't get blamed for because I just gave them the sticker. I didn't tell them to post it in the middle of the library. <laughs> or anywhere, but yeah, I can do stickers. I can do anything you need. Um, <laughs> so the future programmers are those that don't program yet. No. Um, I think that the biggest and the, the neatest right now, I'm still studying at UCF in a uh, marketing degree. Uh, it's actually a half art, half business on how to start your own business in art. Um, but looking at it, it's a huge computer science uh, school. One of the top five in the nation, has been for years and years and years. They don't teach Perl. They teach processing to begin with, and then the higher architecture levels, they teach OO, and that goes into, I think they teach you Python. And I'm like, why not Perl? None of the professors know Pearl, none of them anything about Pearl. And I'm like, well, is it like a vendor thing? And they're like, do they have contractual obligations? No, that's unethical. So why not go out to the college campuses and talk to them? I mean, there, there are two different ways that you can do about this then. Either one, we focus on the students, or two, we focus on the professors. So the professors or the students. Those are two different ways to get to the end goal where we have new students coming to our Pearl conferences. So, incentives to come into the community. Go out and talk to the professors at these, you know, local, like your local university, even your community college level and all that, and say, hey, I've got a Pearl workshop coming up. You want to come out and listen. Volunteer to give a lecture, like, you know, practice your newest talk. I'm going to uh, Frozen Pearl next week. Can I give this talk about the newest implemented Pearl thing to your class? Not have to write a lesson plan for that? Yeah, sure, come on in. <laughs> and you get practice, they get practice, and the students get exposed to more Pearl and hands-on Pearl and somebody they can talk to for bumming you guys for an internship later, which free code writing, okay. I mean, I don't see a problem with, you know, outside people coming in and giving talks during college lectures. Um, and you can offer a ton of things, like, hey, I'll write you guys a test on it if you guys do like a Pearl chapter. I'll write your test on it to that, and I'll give you the answer and all that. It's something that's free and easy to do that you guys can give for just a little bit of your time. And the other thing I'm trying to work out right now is teacher recertification at the conferences so that teachers can come here and get a recertification uh, teaching certificate while taking classes at something like YAPSI. So like the University of Richmond, um, I'm trying to get it set up this year so that the University of Richmond professors can come from that their comp sci department, come in and get a recertification, like a re-up, 
uh, to continue teaching and stuff like that by going to the conference. So it gives them a two-ply to come. One, it's a business <laughs> expense now. Two, I'll meet a lot of cool people. And three, oh, I get recertified. Cool. But most importantly, get them to teach Perl. That's one of the things that I don't think ever happens, is because there's a lot of OO languages out there, and they're, they're teaching OO languages in the upper level computer science, but they skip over Perl. Why? I just don't think anybody's taken the steps to say, hey, this is why. You know, this is why you should choose us. This is something that we can do to get more people. The other thing is students are the easiest people to get involved, because they have no control over what languages they learn, the first one. I have kids that are learning processing now as their first language. It's awkward, and it's funny. And it's a, uh, basically, it's if you took Adobe Illustrator and point projection and shoved it into, and it'll process, or it'll compile into JScript. Um, so it's a, it's a halfway language. It's like logo for experienced people. Um, <laughs> I, it's probably the next one I'm going to actually have to freaking learn, though I really don't want to. Um, <laughs> But there are kids learning that, and I mean, if you can incorporate them into the community, hey, if you guys want to learn something, and you guys want to meet other programmers, and well, this guy does know VB, he did it before, he did it, you know, and I know you have to take a class in VB, why don't you come out and talk to us, and then after the meeting, you can pick his brain. I mean, that's, that's just an easy way. If you want industry contacts, come out and check out our Perlmonger meeting. Uh, mentor, actually go on campus and say, hey, I'll mentor you guys on a uh, university. I would love for a UCF.PM group to exist. I mean, I think that'd be badass. The University of Virginia .pm. I mean, getting one on every college campus, I don't think it's unattainable. I just think it's a little hard right now, and I don't want to be the one who starts it. <laughs> um, but you, you also could open up the, the, the Perlmonger meetings to be a little bit more universal. Um, bars aren't just for camp. You could throw it down at a bar, and that way people have another good reason. College kids hate going to bars. No, uh, but doing it in an inviting place that's a little more public and stuff like that so that they can come in and come out without having to feel like they're going to a Boy Scout meeting. It shouldn't be something like that. It should be a little more socially acceptable, I think. And sadly, bars are more socially acceptable. Um, and don't have one, like, don't just have a Perlmonger meeting to have a Perlmonger meeting. I think that you need to have a legitimately good talk and have a good reason to have a good talk. The second part of that is have a good talk. There's enough things out there and enough talks that you could reuse even. I mean, what, Intro to Catalyst? So here's a popular topic. You could redo that one a couple of times and have different people talking about it and do the talk three or four times over the year if you do bi-weekly meetings. That'd still be pretty cool. Um, so in conclusion, Perl is an amazingly flexible language. It does have a lot of uh, build, and I think that's what we need to focus on. You do have to promote it because you guys are the best promoters of this language and the cheapest promoters of this language. So more than getting posters out there, more than getting a Super Bowl ad, more than getting Keanu Reeves to program Pearl. I got nothing. But um, you guys do it. And more than that, stop the abuse of Pearl right now. Stop other people from talking bad about your language. Defend it and prove why you're better. And don't be afraid to preach it. I mean, don't knock on people's doors saying, have you heard Pearl? Because they really don't like that. I went canvassing one day, and the good word of Pearl is just not good. Um, and the best advertising, though, is better code for businesses. If businesses see that you do it under, or under budget and under time, that's going to pick up your business tenfold. So writing more code and notating code and doing better at your job will increase your profits. Um, an amazing graphic designer wouldn't hurt either. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs>